The Gospel of Mark, Chapter 13 Now as he went out of the temple, one of his disciples says to him, Master, look at how awesome these stones and buildings are. So Jesus answered him, Do you see these great buildings? There will not be one stone left on another that will not be thrown down. Then as he sat on the Mount of Olives, across from the temple, Peter and James and John and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us when these things will happen. What sign will there be when all these things are fulfilled? Then Jesus answered them and began by saying, Be careful that no man deceives you. Many will come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and will deceive many. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but don't be troubled. For such things must happen, but that is still not the end. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places, and there will be famines and troubles. Such things are the beginning of sorrows. Take measures to protect yourself, for they will deliver you up to the councils, and you will be beaten in the synagogues. You will be brought before rulers and kings for my sake as a testimony against them. And the gospel must first be published among all nations. However, when they do take you there, do not plan ahead or worry about what you are going to say. Rather, only speak the words that will be given to you at that moment. For you will not be speaking, but the Holy Spirit. Now the brother will betray brother to death, and the father his son. And children will rise up against their parents, and will cause them to be put to death. You will be hated by all men for my name's sake, but he that will endure to the end, the same will be saved. Now when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by the prophet Daniel, standing where it should not be, let the reader understand. Then let those in Judea flee to the mountains. Do not let him up on the housetop or go down to the house, or go in to take anything out of the house. Do not let him in the field turn back again to get his clothing. Woe to them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. Pray that your flight will not be in the winter, for there will be afflictions in those days, like there never was from the beginning of God's creation to this time, and never will be again. And if the Lord had not shortened those days, no flesh would survive. But for the sake of the elect, whom he has chosen, he has shortened the days. At that time, if any man says, Behold, here is Christ, or behold, he is there, do not believe him. For false Christs and false prophets will rise and will show signs and wonders to seduce even the elect if that was possible. But you be very careful. Behold, I have told you all things in advance. In those days after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give her light. And the stars of heaven will fall and the powers that are in heaven will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send his angels and will gather together his elect from the four winds, from the uttermost part of the earth to the uttermost part of heaven. Now learn the parable from the fig tree. When her branch is still tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So you, in like manner, when you will see these things come to pass, know that it is near, even at the doors. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things are completed. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But of that day and that hour no man knows. No, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, except the Father alone. Take heed, watch and pray, for you know not when the time is. For the Son of Man is like a man taking a long journey, who left his house, and gave authority to his servants, and to every man his work, and commanded the gatekeeper to watch. Therefore keep watch, for you do not know when the master of the house will arrive, in the evening, at midnight, when the cock crows, or in the morning. Otherwise, he will come suddenly and find you sleeping. Therefore, I am telling you, and everyone, to keep watch. The Gospel of Mark, Chapter 14 In two more days, it would be the feast of Passover and unleavened bread. At this time the chief priests and the scribes sought how they might take him by deceit and put him to death. But they said, Not on the feast day, because the people might riot. Now while in Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at mealtime, there came a woman having a very expensive alabaster box of spikenard scented ointment. Then she broke the box and poured it on his head. And there was indignation from some of them, saying, Why was this ointment wasted? It could have been sold for more than 300 pence and have been given to the poor. 
so they murmured against her. But Jesus said, Leave her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has done a good work for me. You will always have the poor with you, and you can do good for them any time. But you will not always have me. She did what she could for me by coming in advance to anoint my body for a burial. Truly I say to you, wherever this gospel is preached throughout the whole world, what she did will also be spoken, that she will always be remembered. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went to the chief priest to betray him to them. When they heard about it, they were glad and promised to give him money. So he sought how he might conveniently betray him. Now on the first day of unleavened bread, when they killed the Passover, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and prepare so that you may eat the Passover? Then he sends forth two of his disciples and saying, Go into the city, and there a man will meet you bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him. At the home he enters, say to the husband of the house, The master says, Where is the guest hall where I will eat the Passover with my disciples? and he will show you a large upper room, furnished and prepared. Get it ready for us there. So his disciples went forth and came into the city and found things just as he said. So they got the Passover meal ready, and he came at evening with the twelve. And as they sat eating, Jesus said, Truly I say to you, one of you which eats with me will betray me. Then they became sorrowful and said to him one by one, Is it I? And the other said, Is it I? And he answered and said to them, It is one of the twelve that dips with me in the dish. The Son of Man indeed goes, as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be good for that man if he had never been born. And as they ate, Jesus took the bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. And he said to them, This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many. Truly I say to you, I will drink no more the fruit of the vine until the day I drink it anew in the kingdom of God. Then after they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And Jesus says to them, All of you will stumble because of me tonight, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am risen, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. But Peter said to him, Even if everyone else stumbles, still I will not. But then Jesus says to him, Truly I say to you, that today, this very night, before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he spoke even more forcefully, Even if I must die with you, I still will not deny you anyway. And they all said the same thing. And they came to a place which is named Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. Then he takes Peter, James, and John with him, and began to be greatly troubled and very heavy. And he says to them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful to the point of death. Wait here and watch. Now he went forward a little and fell to the ground and prayed that if it were possible, this hour might pass from him. He prayed, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what you will. Then he arrived and finds them sleeping and says to Peter, Simon, you sleep? Could you not even watch one hour? Watch and pray for fear you enter into temptation. The spirit is truly willing, but the flesh is weak. Then again, he went away and prayed and spoke the same words. When he returned, he found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy, and they didn't know how to answer him. Then he arrived the third time and says to them, From now on, sleep and take your rest. The hour has now passed. Behold, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise up, for it is time to go. Behold, he that betrays me is at hand. Then immediately as he was speaking, Judas arrived, one of the twelve, And with him was a great multitude with swords and clubs from the chief priests and scribes and the elders. He that betrayed him had given them a sign, saying, The one that I kiss, he is the one. Take him and lead him away safely. As soon as he arrived, he immediately came to him, saying, 
Master, Master, and kissed him. Then they laid their hands on him and took him. And one of them that stood by drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Jesus answered them, You came out here as against a robber with swords and clubs to take me? I was with you in the temple teaching daily, and you didn't take me. But the scriptures must be fulfilled. Then his followers all forsook him and fled. At that time a certain young man followed him, wearing a linen cloth to cover his naked body. When the young men laid hold on him, he left the linen cloth and fled from them naked. Then they led Jesus away to the high priest, and with him were assembled all the chief priests, elders, and scribes. And Peter followed him from a distance, even into the palace of the high priest. And as he sat with the servants, he warmed himself at the fire. Then the chief priest and all the council began looking for a witness against Jesus to put him to death, but found none. For many bore false witness against him, but their testimonies were not the same. But a few got up and bore false witness against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and within three days I will build another made without hands. But even their testimonies were not the same. Then the high priest stood up in the midst and asked Jesus, saying, Have you nothing to say? Can you explain what they are saying against you? But he remained silent and gave no answer. Again the high priest asked him and said to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? And Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore its clothes, saying, What do we need any other witness for? You heard the blasphemy. How do you see it? And they all condemned him as guilty and worthy of death. Then some began to spit on him, cover his face, and hit him, saying, Prophesy. And the officers slapped him with the palms of their hands. And as Peter was below in the palace, one of the maids of the high priest came over. And when she saw Peter warming himself, she looked on him and said, You were with Jesus of Nazareth also. And he denied, saying, I don't know him, and I don't understand what you were talking about. Then he went out on the porch, and the rooster crowed. Then the maid saw him again, and she began to say to those standing by, He is one of them. And he denied it again. Then a little later, those standing by said again to Peter, Surely you are one of them. You are a Galilean, and your speech is the same. But he began to curse and swear, saying, I don't know this man you are talking about. Then the rooster crowed the second time, and Peter remembered what Jesus had said to him. Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And when he remembered, he wept. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 15. Then immediately in the morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes, and the whole council and bound Jesus, carried him away, and delivered him to Pilate. So Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus replied, You will proclaim it. Now the chief priest accused him of many things, but he gave no answer. And Pilate asked him again, saying, You give no answer? Look at everything they are saying against you. But Jesus still gave no answer, and this made Pilate wonder. Now at the time of the feast, Pilate was accustomed to giving them one prisoner whom they asked. And there was a man there, he called Barabbas, who was detained along with the others who had made a riot and during the riot committed murder. And the multitude, crying aloud, desired that he do as he always did. So Pilate asked, Do you want me to release the king of the Jews to you? For he knew that the chief priests had delivered him out of envy. But the chief priests moved the people that he should release Barabbas to them instead. And Pilate answered and said again to them, Then what do you want me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? And they shouted, Crucify him! Then Pilate answered, Why? What has he done wrong? And they shouted louder, Crucify him! Since Pilate was willing to appease the people, he released Barabbas to them. Then having scourged him, he delivered Jesus to be crucified. So the soldiers led him away into the hall, called the Praetorium, and called all the troops together. There they clothed him with purple and braided a crown of thorns and placed it upon his head, and began to salute him, Hail, King of the Jews! And they struck him on the head with a reed and spit on him. 
and bowing their knees, worshipped him. Then when they were done mocking him, they took the purple robe off him and put his own clothes back on. Then they led him out to be crucified, and they ordered a man named Simon to come and carry his cross. Simon was a Cyrenian who was just passing by from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus. So they bring Jesus to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. And they gave him wine mixed with myrrh to drink, and Jesus refused it. But when they had crucified him, they divided up his clothes, casting lots for them to determine who would take them. It was the third hour, and they crucified him. The inscribed accusation against him was written above, the king of the Jews. And with him they also crucified two thieves, one at his right hand, the other at his left. So the scripture was fulfilled, which says, he was numbered with the transgressors. Those that passed by blasphemed him, shaking their heads, saying, Hey, you that destroys a temple and builds it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. Likewise, also the chief priest, mocking among themselves with the scribes, said, He saved others, but he cannot save himself. Let Christ, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so we can see and believe. And those being crucified with him also insulted him. And when the sixth hour came, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which is being interpreted means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of them standing by when they heard it said, Behold, he calls Elijah. And one ran and filled a sponge full of vinegar and put it on a reed and gave it to him, saying, Leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah does come take him down. Then Jesus cried out with a loud voice and gave up the spirit. And the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion that stood facing him saw how he cried out and then gave up the spirit, he said, Truly this man was the Son of God. There were also women watching from a distance. Among them was Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James the Less and of Joses and Salome, who also, when he was in Galilee, followed him and ministered to him, and many other women which came up with him to Jerusalem. Then when evening came, because it was the preparation day, that is, the day before the Passover Sabbath, there came an honorable member of the council, who also waited for the kingdom of God, named Joseph of Arimathea. And he went in boldly to Pilate and earnestly asked for the body of Jesus. But Pilate wondered if he was already dead, so he called the centurion over to him and asked if he had been dead for long. When Pilate found out from the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. And Joseph bought fine linen and took him down and wrapped him in linen and laid him in a tomb which was cut out of rock and rolled a stone over the door of the tomb. And Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joses, beheld where he was laid. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 16. Then as the Sabbath day ended, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, brought sweet spices so they could come and anoint him. Then at the beginning of the first day of the week, they came to the tomb when the sun was still on the horizon. Then talking among themselves, they said, who will roll away the stone from the door of the tomb for us? For it was very large. But when they looked, they saw that the stone was already rolled away. Then as they entered the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white robe, and they were frightened. But he says to them, Do not be frightened. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified? He is not here. He has risen. Behold the place where they laid him. Now... Go your way, tell his disciples and Peter that he goes before you to Galilee. You will see him there just as he told you. So they went out quickly and ran from the tomb, for they were trembling and amazed. And they said nothing to any man, for they were afraid. Now early the first day of the week after Jesus was risen, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils. So she went out and told those that had been with him as they mourned and wept. But when they heard that he was alive and that she had seen him, they did not believe. After that, he appeared in another form to two of them as they were walking out to the country. So they went and told it to the others, but they didn't believe either. Afterward, he appeared to the eleven as they reclined at mealtime. But he rebuked them for their unbelief and hardness of heart because they did not believe those 
that had seen him after he was risen. And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. He that believes and is baptized will be saved, but he that does not believe will be damned. You will see these signs follow those that believe. In my name they will cast out devils, they will speak new languages, they will pick up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will do them no harm. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. So then after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere, and the Lord was working with them, confirming the word with signs that followed. Amen. Amen.